Welcome to the Interesting Podcast, episode number 92. This episode is with Mick Malamphy, who's just the best. You'll know him from Red Dead Redemption 2, where he played Sean McGuire. And like Sean McGuire in the game, Mick is also from Ireland, which you guys know how obsessed I am with that country. Absolutely love it. The people are amazing, and Mick is no exception. We talked about where his love of theater started. We talked about how he worked in pubs in Dublin and then immigrated to New York and worked in pubs there and what the difference is like uh, working in the same industry in two different countries. We talked about what keeps him coming back to theater, why he loves it so much. Uh, And then, of course, we had to talk about Red Dead 2. I mean, come on, guys. It's Sean McGuire. Uh, So we got to talk about what that audition was like, what it was like working on it, how long he worked on it. Um, we also talked about, you know, how, uh, how Sean ended up and how he took that. He's also got some great stories about him playing the game himself. Um, it was just the greatest. Um, I, I absolutely loved talking with Mick. He's such a good dude and, uh, you're going to love him too. So without further ado, let's get into it. Please enjoy the interesting podcast episode number 92 with Mick Melanfi. Theme song time. That's great. Yeah, this is the first podcast I've ever done in my life. So Really? Well, first off, yeah. my apologies. And uh, <laughs> don't hold other podcasts to this standard. Oh, no, no. It's, I'm, I'm excited. <laughs> I'm excited to do it, man. I'm very excited. Dude, I'm excited to finally talk with you. It's been a long time yeah. coming. It's been a while, yeah. It's, um, I've kind of stayed away from a lot of... Um, I'm on Twitter quite a bit, but sure, sure. I post a lot of silly photographs on Instagram, but that's kind of about it, you know? Sure, sure. It's Sometimes that's best. You know, especially these days. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I can imagine. I can imagine, yeah. It can get a little crazy. Get a little crazy. How's your day going? It's going good. It's going good. It's kind of humid up here. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Don't, humidity, Florida. It yeah, is, I'm sure. It is unbearable. Yeah. <laughs> you well, have... I've been down to Florida a couple of times. I know it's... I don't oh. know how you guys do it down there. <laughs> uh, you got to swim through the air. That's how you yeah. do it. It's... That's kind of like here in, in New York. It gets like that as well, Um but I mean, everywhere has air conditioners. Every building you walk in has air conditioners. So, you know. Thank God. It's, 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 a, it's a weird thing here because, like, you go outside and then you sweat a ton and then you go yeah. inside to the ice cold air and you're like, oh, now I'm freezing. <laughs> yeah, no, you're freezing. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but no it's, yeah, up here, it's, it's, it's New York is funny because everyone's complaining now about the heat and the humidity. And six months from now, we're all going to be stuck underneath snow. Yeah. <laughs> they're complaining about the snow and the cold. And it's like, you know, you just can't win. It's. Complaining is like a sport here in New York, you know. Yeah, that's that's a that's a defining quality of a New Yorker personality. <laughs> <laughs> people are nice here, and we get a bad rap, but in general, people like to complain. <laughs> they, they were nice when I was there. I my wife and I just went for the first time in let's see, I think it would have been April. Oh, April, nice one. April or March, and uh, whew, it was cold. It's real cold. Yeah. <laughs> actually, I didn't actually. You know what's funny? This year, I didn't. If you're from Florida, I'm sure April and March this year probably felt cold. Yeah. This year wasn't even that bad, but you didn't even get as much snow as normal. So. Really? Yeah, oh. you get acclimatized to it. I'm 20 years here now, so I'm kind of used to it at this point. Sure, you've acclimated. Yeah, acclimated. Yeah, acclimatized, yeah. Yeah, we were in. We went and saw uh, Randall Duke Kim, who's been on the show. He invited me to a play he did in New Jersey, and oh, I was nice. like, Oh, well, I got to do that. So we landed in Newark, which I was like, New York is right there. Let's just take it and go. It's like it's just out of reach. It's, yes. it's funny. Yeah, very funny. <laughs> exactly. So we took a day. We're like, we're gonna go to New York. Let's do that. We gotta go to New York. I was actually doing a show. I was in uh, I was in three plays all at once in repertory at the Irish Rep from yes. the Irish Rep Theater from the end of January to like the end of June. Just finished a month ago. So uh, that? So it was great. It was great. It's my favorite place in the world to work is the Irish Repertory Theater here in Manhattan. They're just, they're the greatest. Um, they're just the greatest. It's just a fun place to work. It's where I got my equity card. Oh, like, there you go. Years ago. So it feels like home. I've done about 10 shows there now. Nice. And uh, just, it's just a nice place to work at, you know. And, and they sure. put on they do really good work and they're, 
they're just they're just from top to bottom. Everybody that works there is just you know just lovely. They're constantly inviting you to openings of other plays. They're really they're they they do so much for the community, the theater community in in New York City. So it was sure. a thrill. It was fun. That's so cool. Yeah. And you get to do like Irish plays too. Yeah, well, we just did like Sean. I don't know. If people, a lot of people may or may not know Sean O'Casey is like the Irish big guy. Ireland's yeah, he's Ireland's answer to Eugene O'Neill, I guess. In yeah. Terms of, all right of the 20th century and his work is very important and uh and the, we did three of his the dublin plays they're kind of generally known as and then um, we did them in repertory and yeah it was, it was really neat it was really cool so it was a lot of work and it's uh yeah it's always a pity when you, you're doing something that you love and it comes to an end for the first week or two i was kind of lost i bet Especially uh, that, the amount of time it takes any sort of theater it's like you see the show but you didn't see the months of like oh, all the things and tweaking it and living it, and then by the time they see it, you're like, "Oh, we've been we've been in this for a while." Yeah, I, it's funny because I still have dreams. I wake up and I'll have w- the weirdest dreams where I'm just backstage waiting to go on. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you sleep my on logging. I, I don't even remember half of my bloody lines, <laughs> but I can remember these funny little moments just as you're about to walk on stage. Just you know, yeah. And uh, and the other great talent that the Irish Repertory Theatre has is they always hire just. Uh, casts who just get on really well together so you know there was so important people that you've worked with before and then other people that you're working with for the first time and it's by the end of it all it's just a shame to say goodbye but it's just it's a very supportive community like you know that's very cool. lucky, yeah. that, very yeah, lucky very to lucky. have absolutely you know? i mean and that just makes the whole experience even better too because then you develop like this family where you're all in the trenches trying to build oh, a show absolutely yeah. and i mean and to, to be quite honest with you a lot of people don't talk about it but off broadway in New York, it's kind of like that. Sure, it's just I mean, it's it's a huge industry up here, and um, and if it wasn't for the, the people out there who are supporting it, because people going to see plays in the city night after night, um, I mean, there's there's just a it's, it's I mean, I think theater in this city is bigger than some of the major league sports teams in terms of what they bring to the city. Oh, you know, for between sure. Broadway and all Broadway, it's it's a huge industry up here, and uh, and it's great because you got people from all over the world working in it. It's a real melting pot. It yeah. really is. For it's sure. a very New York kind of a thing, you know. Sure. Is that what brought you to New York in the first place? No, I was. Uh, I finished college. I finished drama school in 1999 back in Dublin, and I, uh, I'm from Cork in Ireland originally. Oh, I was right born in Dublin, up in Cork. Love it. And, uh, I just I wanted to do theater since I was a kid. I wanted. I always kind of. I always wanted to be involved in theater. That was my first love, and uh, I worked in a bar in Dublin. Nice. Like, uh, Good place for active. it. Yeah. And uh, the guys, it was a bar called Eamon Doran's, and they had a few spots over here in New York. And I knew people that came over to work over here. So I just came over to visit. Why and not? I just kind of found myself getting involved in the bar scene, working in pubs here. Eventually owned a pub on the Upper East Side of Manhattan. Oh, right on. And yeah, and at the same time, I was doing my theater, doing my acting, you know, working and doing a few voiceovers, commercials. Sure. That's what it takes. There, yeah. There's there's no actor that's and just and acting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah, that's it. It's 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 you got to. It's it's hard to make a living uh, as an actor, as I'm sure a lot of people will attest to. But uh, about a year ago, I decided to just get out of the bar business, sold up the bar business, and then um, I just decided to concentrate on my acting and theater. And obviously, I'd been working on uh, Red Dead Redemption Two for a while as well, so that kind of kept me kind of you know in the loop. Sure, sure. The acting yeah, kind of kept my juices kind of flowing. Right on. And I just last year was just a good time. I think it was time to kind of take that step. You know, it's there's always that time because you have you have to have like one foot in each one because yeah. with the the nature of acting is you know it, it's freelance. It's you're you're Absolutely. hired and fired every few months. Yeah, it's you don't a, you don't know you don't know, <laughs> you don't know where the next uh, gig is coming from, which is why I'm kind of starting my own theater company now as well. And right on. A little bit of work, so you just got to keep busy at it. So you know. Sure. So, That's the advice I give to all the you know young burgeoning actors out there. <laughs> there there's no um, there's no uh, blueprint. Yeah, for real. Really, it just it's just trying to do as much work as possible and get stuck in, you know, and and enjoy exactly. it. Exactly. If you're not enjoying it, then you know. What's the point? <laughs> absolutely no point. No point whatsoever. You know. I totally agree. So, how different was it working at a bar in Dublin versus working at a bar in New York City? Um. Big difference I found because I've worked in bars since I was sixteen, right forty-two on. now, so I've been at it a long time. The biggest difference was in uh, in New York. People come to see you. People come to see the bartender. Sure. It's, it's more uh, 
performative. People come because people will come in to visit you because they want to have a bit of fun with you, enjoy your company. And um, a lot of the bars in Ireland, a lot of the time, you know, not knocking Irish bartenders. Irish bartenders are great in Ireland, but a lot of time people will go to the bars anyway. And sure. whoever find a bar serving drinks wasn't so much a draw, you know. Sure, sure. Things, to be a draw, things like live music or karaoke or if there's events on, people are going to go to the pub anyway. Pubs in Ireland tend to be a bit more like community centres. People are going to go to the bar because it's a place where people kind of go to see what's happening in town. And it's a place to, it's, it's more so than a place to go and get drunk. It's a place to kind of go and meet people. Sure. You know, for in Ireland, that's what bars kind of existed as, what community centres, you know? Sure. It's funny, actually, for the longest time, a lot of bars in Ireland... Uh, the bar owner would also be an undertaker because there were oh. a few <laughs> way back in the olden days. Sure. Uh, there were a few places that actually had like a cold room. So oh, if wow. somebody kicked it, you know, was found dead, luckily, <laughs> they'd be brought to the local bar, stuck in the cold room, and that's, you know, that was the first port of call. So wow. that's kind of how important the bar, the pub is in Irish kind of culture. And then I know we have a, a reputation around the world as being, you know, big into socializing. Yeah, <laughs> and, uh, and that's, and that's kind of that's where a lot of it comes from, like you know. Sure, sure. But, uh, but um, I, I'm glad. I'm kind of glad to have left it behind. To, the bar business, it's it's a tough business. It's, I um, bet it's like a um, restaurant, but even more niche. It, yeah, you know, yeah. it's the same thing, and and you're constantly working on everyone else and everyone else's needs. So exactly, and competition yeah. alone. There's bars everywhere, so it's, it's like how do you stand there. out? You know, the one thing in New York is nice is a lot of the bars they kind of support each other. That's you know, cool. That's, that's what I find about the culture in New York in general, in spite of what people kind of think it's like, it's a very supportive city. Sure. There's great support structures here, left, right, and center for people. I mean, even as an immigrant coming here 20 years ago, there was just a ton of, you know, Irish people as well as immigrants from other countries that you could kind of mix in with, get to know. And uh, that's kind of the nature of the city. And that's why I kind of love New York. That's why I'm still here, I think. I bet. I bet. You know? That's one of the reasons why we, we put up with crazy rents and uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. no laundry, no washing machines in our apartments and yeah. giant rats. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when we were in New York, we we took the subway one time and we saw a rat. We're like, look, this is part of the experience. It's like, yeah, got, it's it, a yeah. real New York rat. That's what I'm talking yeah. about. The rats, they're, they're here. That's the problem. That's I mean, they're, they're all around. It's it's uh, you just gotta you just gotta kind of put it to the side of your mind and just you yeah, know it's try just to life. Remember. It's yeah. just like it's happening, yeah. That's right. I love it. I love Big it. Big pizza rats running all over the place. Yeah. <laughs> you see one dragging a piece of pizza that's the size yeah. of it. <laughs> well, there was a video. There was a YouTube video. Of, I don't know if you saw the pizza rat a couple of years ago in New York dragging a slice of pizza down the steps. That's amazing. Catching the F train to Queens or somewhere like yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, that's so cool. And what a cool place to be, too, as well. Like, it, yeah. it is. I mean, it's the theater capital of the world. Everyone yeah. knows, like, theater, Broadway. New York, that's the yeah. place to be. It's, it's a place to be, especially for theater. And, for, I mean, for lots of creative people. But, I mean, for theater, it's, it's just wonderful. You know, yep. like I, I've said, the industry here, it's, 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 you're just so well supported. That's it doesn't cool mean that it's, it, it doesn't make it easier. It doesn't mean that, of you course. know, it's, <laughs> it's still hard to get paid. I know, bet. Your work. Um, and any actor will tell you, the actors, you're an actor yourself, right? I try my best. Yeah, I'm the same as myself. <laughs> you know. <laughs> you know, we are, we are the, in terms of when it comes to, you know, we are the least paid. You For know, sure. Whatever. And the most competitive. But the most competitive, least paid. And it's, and it's even, I even feel from a lot of my sisters who are actresses, female actors. I mean, it's even, it's even more competitive. Oh, for them. sure. So. It's nuts. That's know, why sure. anytime I try to book an actor on the show, uh, I'm always like, if they say they're busy, I'm like, good. That's I yeah. want to hear an actor's working. <laughs> well, that's kind of the thing is, that's what I've been doing for the last six months. Is it's it's I've been I've been pretty busy for the last year and a half. I've done about I've done eight plays in the last year and a half. Right three on. Three shows, and then Red Dead came out as well. So it's been a busy. It's been a it's been a good time to kind of transition into a new career. Sure. Yeah, sure. it's been busy, and it's and being busy is good. You know. So I totally good agree. To, so you like any other, eight yeah. plays in a year. How do you memorize lines? What is what is your technique? I've heard a I bunch. Oh, know. you know, it's funny. I've I thought about that since I was since I've, I've tried to think about it, and um, it seems to. I was never very really good at science in school, but I remember learning about osmosis, where things get absorbed. Yeah, same. And I had a chat with a very good friend of mine recently, and we just it was a casual conversation about this. Uh, she's an actor as well here in New York, and I've asked her like if she has a technique. 
I find once you're once you're working on something that you're really interested in, they do just kind of come to you. I find the and same. I found like in, in rehearsals, I, I actually love rehearsing more than anything in the world. Sure. Like, the thing in the world. It's made. Before. Yeah, you know, it's it, being in the rehearsal room, getting to try things out, and just it, it, it's all storytelling. No matter what, I mean, whether it's it, whether it's music, whether it's you know theater, whether it's it's all a form of storytelling. And if you're interested in telling jokes and telling a story and you just rehearse it and work on it, eventually you get it. And eventually it gets to a point where it's it's real for you every every night, every experience. Sure. It sure. probably explains why I find it hard to kind of recite bits and pieces of monologues when I'm not actually in it. Oh, yeah. I have a hard time, like, recalling. But when uh, when you're actually in it and you're kind of enjoying it and having fun, that that's, that's how it seems to work for me, you know. I, I have two one-man shows coming up now, and... Yeah, it's just kind of to say I'm not really too worried because I've already done them over the last few years. Um, sure, they're there. They're there. Yeah, yeah. It's and again, it's it's about telling the story and enjoying that. You know, I totally agree. I, I totally find agree. um, I I I find um, in the in the late 19th century and 20th century, you know, all of a sudden you had all these kind of schools of uh, of theater started popping up where yep. came up with these techniques. But you know, we've been performing since the dawn of time you know we've been Absolutely. dancing the years and telling stories and singing songs since you know that's something that as humans we do inherently so it's in all of us you know when you look at kids even playing in school and stuff or kids playing in the streets they're just they're completely in it so you're right i think a lot of the time um the 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 idea of acting and the idea of performing is kind of drilled out of us as we get older you know we absolutely we build up these walls and we can kind of be in touch with our younger selves. It certainly kind of helps when you're in a business like this, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I remember talking to somebody one time and they said on, on, on that, actually, they said, if you give a kid a piece of paper, you're like, draw a zebra. They will just draw a zebra. They're like, I don't even know what that is, but here's what I think it is. Whereas we've been so like conditioned by like, that's not right. Maybe not this, that we get calloused by life, you know, as we go on. We can guess ourselves. We start to overthink. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. I find actually some of my best moments on stage is usually where I, I I can't even recall them because I'm just not thinking. Yep, I totally you agree. In the moment, enjoying it, having fun. And I think that's why a lot of my dreams that I have about the recent few plays I did are more about those experiences. Like those sure. moments. It's it's more about that than it is act than actually anything specific. Totally agreed. So it's, it's interesting, yeah. You know what I found to be a really like a uh, unexpected practice for acting. So I started playing Dungeons and Dragons a year ago. Right. Dude, it's like, it's all improv, the whole yeah. thing. Because like you write these characters and you make them so they come out of you and then right. you're given scenarios and you just, you don't think it's all creative problem solving through improv with a bunch of people around a table. Yeah. It's like great. At the end, after six months, I was like, whoa, I'm like actually thinking like this character now. It's yeah. really interesting. It's, well, it's role play. And you're just getting, you know, you're just getting into the that mindset. Absolutely, role playing. Boom! Look at that, you know? playing roles. We figured it out. That was easy. Roles. That's it. <laughs> Mr. Stanislavski and all these people are making so much money selling yeah. their book. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's right. All it took was me and you. We've we've cracked yeah. acting, Mick. We did yeah. it. Yeah, you can tell all these schools, all these famous schools up here. Yeah, you don't need to do any courses for thousands of dollars. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> You need to play D and D for one year. You're golden. That's yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Play D and D and talk. That's talk it. And... That's right. That's right. I found it's so interesting to hear like other people's uh, techniques. Like I know some people who are like, I have to read it and then I have to write it down. And something mm-hmm. about the text, I'm like, oh, I don't have time for that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't get like it. You recall when it comes to lines for me, I find um, I find walking. I find yeah walking the lines and getting into a bit of a rhythm. It's kind of like a musical kind of a feeling to it. I totally to, agree. Uh, getting to getting like lines actually in the mind. Sure, because you want um, them to. You get you have to like learn them so well that you can forget them and then speak them for real. And then exactly just kind of, and then just yeah, let them flow. You know, there's there's a certain flow. I've heard a lot of writers talk about that. Get into a certain state of kind of flow. Yeah, totally. And that's kind of I think I think that's for the actor that's that. And whatever way you find it, 
Absolutely. Absolutely. I've often gone for long walks around New York City at one o'clock in the morning. Yeah. (laughs) And I'll I'll just have the lines in my mind, just going over them, going over them. Sure. And they won't mess with you because they'll be like, it's that crazy guy again. They think (laughs) there's a crazy guy. Yeah, exactly. He's not. He's talking to himself. Yeah. (laughs) But then you're like, give me three weeks. You're going to be thanking me for this. (laughs) Exactly. Yeah. (laughs) Buy a ticket to my show, please. That's right. Yeah. (laughs) Just pass out pamphlets for everyone that looks at you where you'd be like, here, the Irish rep, the Irish rep. Yeah. The Irish rep. <laughs> find, <laughs> find ways to use your lines in conversation. <laughs> so Absolutely. you're actually saying your lines at them, and you're like, hey, pamphlet. <laughs> hey, it can work. I That's right. Whatever works. i on the subway all the time, so you know maybe they're just all actors. That's true. Hey, you never know. That, I'm going to, I had a great I experience. I caught myself doing it. going to auditions, like just sitting there, like looking in the window on the train, just, and I see myself talking to myself. I'm like, oh, stop, you know? <laughs> <laughs> It's worth it in the end. It's worth it in the yeah, end. Just keep going. It will be exactly. Book the gig, you know. <laughs> That's funny. So you, so you said you wanted to be in acting from like really young as a kid. Well, yeah, what was it that kid. got you? Uh, my grandmothers. Both my grandmothers were. That's awesome. They weren't really into theater. They weren't big theatrical people. We didn't come from a very theatrical family. Like you know, my very working class kind of same regular family back home in Ireland. Mom and dad both worked and all, and really, really, you know. Just a nice, really kind of cool upbringing in Ireland. And um, my my grandmother, Melamphy, on my father's side, used to bring me to the Cork Opera House. Oh, cool. A pantomime every year. And she'd be like, you could be up there. And, you know, I never really kind of thought of it too much. And then, in, then I went to, I remember I moved schools. I went to this one school in Cork. And one of the things they did was school musicals every year. Oh, perfect. So I was nine years of age and auditioning for... Um, yeah, auditioning for school musicals. And they were very engaged, you know. They were really kind of engaged. That's cool. And I just kind of really enjoyed myself. I enjoyed it in the same regard. I used to love running around playing soccer and playing sports. And I got a kick out of this as well. And um, and that was it, yes. For like a lot of people, it started in school. And sure. uh, I found I could get out of doing homework. That's found, the way, man. <laughs> I found that, yeah, because it usually would be one of the teachers would be like the director of the play. Sure. Uh, in secondary school, I had this one school teacher, Fiona Lee, and she was a great, great teacher, but she taught us Irish, Gaelic. Oh, I was ter- sweet. <laughs> I was terrible at Irish. That's because it's not a language. I've what? tried to read oh, it. No, 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 no. It's <laughs> so difficult. <laughs> it's a language. It's, but, um, it doesn't be, read the way it sounds. <laughs> no, it doesn't. It absolutely doesn't. But, um, I would get out and do my homework. I'd just say, well, I was at home studying my lines last night and learning this song and learning that song and... Uh, so I don't have my, you know, homework done today. Oh, don't worry about it. Don't worry about there it. That's okay. There you go. <laughs> but then, of course, well, the time came around where I tried it. Yep. Uh, I wasn't of actually course. any plays at the time. And then I got to <laughs> it. So I figured out uh, <laughs> that's kind of what I learned in school. Like, you know, yeah. <laughs> that's amazing. Can you speak Gaelic? Yeah, yeah. That's do, so uh, cool. Uh, I tried. Uh, I tried uh, for a long time. Uh, yeah. Oh, so it's, cool. Uh, it, it's, a, it's, I mean, it's a beautiful language. It's an old language. I agree. I, I totally wouldn't be um, I wouldn't be as good as like when you go home to parts of Ireland the Gaeltacht people speak it. Yeah, yeah. And uh, since I left Ireland, I know there's a lot of Gael Colosters, which are Irish schools, where um, you're taught entirely in Irish. Oh. Um, yeah, Tell Irish is, is our form of Gaelic. There's different there's different languages in the Gaelic family, like sure. And, uh, Irish is is what we have in Ireland, and um, and even in Ireland there's different little variations. What sure. they speak up north. It's different to Munster and different to the West, but uh, but it's fun. It's nice and it's also great. Um, it's 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 great because you're growing up from a young age. From the age of six, they teach it in schools, and uh, that's the way to learn. Yeah, and you also you get to learn how to think in a different language. You yeah, know, it, for you sure. Don't realize until you're 13 and you decide to take on German because yeah. <laughs> you know all these German students are coming over to visit, and all of a sudden you want to speak German. Sure. <laughs> to the Germans that are coming over to visit Ireland. And um, and it, it, you know it, it, it can be a great help. It can be it can be a good help. So I bet being so, bilingual yeah. at all is already better because your mind just opens more. It, it thinks differently. It's better. Yeah. it's just better. I, it just it makes it makes it it can make it can make sense. And it's also just nice to it's nice to know another language. Absolutely, it's nice to communicate to people in different languages. You know, I'm actually doing um I'm doing a, a show that's coming up soon, and um we're shooting it next week. I don't really want to say what it is because sure. There's always the possibility I might get sacked and then yeah. I'm gone. <laughs> you know, I might not get there or I might cancel it or something. I hear you. 
but I actually speak Irish in this particular episode. Oh, cool. That's neat. So I'll be able to call up my Irish teacher back in Ireland. There you go. I did it. I have my homework and I say, look, look at this. Look at this guy. It worked. And now he's speaking Irish on TV. So That's so cool. That'll be kind of interesting, yeah. I'm obsessed with Ireland. I'm going to tell you that right out the gate. I feel like we're friends now. Good, and, absolutely, man. Dude. Uh, so I went yeah, like... If you do get... Have you been to Ireland? I did. I went three years ago and I saw... Okay, so here's where here's the road. Get ready. Yeah. So landed in Dublin, right? right? Stayed there for a couple days. Drove all the way to Port McGee, right? And then went up to Dingle, the Cliffs of Moher. Stayed a day or two in Galway, yeah. Donegal, and then to Belfast for a few days. Back Very to Dublin. Cool. Well, you did a whole all the whole trip all around. But I knew right away that you'd been when you said you'd been to Ireland. I knew you must have gone to Dingle because that's where. Dude, Dingle's where it's at. Yep. That's what the films the last. I can see a few photographs on your wall there. I mean, <laughs> I, mean I like before, Star Wars, Mick. What it, do you want from me? <laughs> made a crack, made a crack be with you. Like, That's right. Yeah. Oh, dude, I've been on that rock from the. Oh, really? Yeah. Skellig Michael, yeah. I've been to Skellig Michael, yeah. Wow, wow, that's amazing. You want to talk about an like, extra worldly experience? It's beautiful. I mean, it is the most beautiful place in the world. I it's, 100% agree. I, you know, I've been growing to... up there, we didn't appreciate it. Actually, when we were in school, I grew up about an hour and a half from there. Oh, sweet. So when I was, yeah, I'm from Cork, which is just over the oh, Cork yeah. Heritage We drove Order. by it. Yeah, I'm yeah. from Allen College, just outside Cork City. Oh, and, yeah. um, I know exactly where that is. When, yeah, when we, were, uh, when we were kids, we would be dragged down to Dingle. Yeah. <laughs> Meg there, who wrote all about her life growing up out in the Blaskets, all in Irish. Yeah. We'd be dragged down there. We had to speak Irish, do Irish dancing, play Irish sports. And it was great fun. But, you know, it was all in Irish. Yep. So growing up, it was like, oh, God, here we here go we again. Go. <laughs> that was an adult. And as I'm, I'm kind of a Yank, you know, I'm an American citizen now as well. Right. You know, when I go home, that's one of my first ports of call is down to Dingle. Yep, same. You know, We're... a couple of pints down there. Yeah. You know, some good local food, some good fish and chips. And then, yeah, take those drives out around Slay Head. So Absolutely. Anybody who's listening to the podcast, go to Ireland, go to Dingle, yes. see the car pass and Slay Head. All of it, all of it. It's the it's. I've been to twenty countries outside the U.S. Ireland's my favorite place in the world. Ah, oh, that's great to know, man. That's cool. It's a gorgeous. It it was something like, it's really hard to explain. I was just talking to someone yesterday about this. I was like, it's it was almost like something connected. Like while I was there, it was like, oh, you're meant to be. Like you know, your ancestors came from right here. Yeah, and just... it's, it's it's a funny it's a funny vibe. Like I I never got it growing up because again, when you're in somewhere, you. You don't see it. Same so as Florida. You know, when you leave, yeah. But um, I do, I, I always feel a sadness when I leave now. When I'm over there and I'm visiting and I, I leave, it's always kind of tough, you know. it's uh, I almost feel like, I mean, I love it here. This is my life. I love New York. I, this is home and this is where I work. But when I'm coming back, I always feel like I'm, I feel like I'm coming back to work. I feel like I'm going to be plugged back into the Matrix almost. Yeah. You know, it's, there it's is something. something. There's something out there. There's something about it. I, I think I think it's I think it really I do think it's the people I think there's something about the people there where there's just a bit of a I think so too they've got a Mediterranean kind of a temperament and attitude with um with uh, like the geography is quite kind of northern European and everything else and it's it makes for a kind of a cool kind of a mix you know it does it does yeah. it's just it's just nice it's just yeah. real nice I loved it's, uh, it and yeah and the pub and the pubs are great the pubs, the pubs are great <laughs> <laughs> we 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 landed at. 7.30 in the morning, by yeah. a, by 11.30, I was drunk in the Guinness Brewery. That's all right. So, that's a, well, you're like, it's right a passage. The pubs don't open until about 10 o'clock, so that's all right. Go that's what I'm saying. Oh, yeah, you're dead right. You know, I, I learned the ways. It's like, don't yeah, go remember, drink the first one. <laughs> I can remember when um, I remember when the Guinness Brewery, did, when the experience was just like a room. It didn't have yeah. that like, big. Now it's like a beautiful museum, and it's yeah. kind of a cool experience, and you drink the drink up in the sky, you're looking at the Dublin mountains, and it's lovely. I can remember when, you know, yeah, I remember doing a play years ago, and I think we put on a show for people at the Guinness Brewery, and it was just like, it was a horrible little bar. Yeah. <laughs> you got lots of free Guinness. It wasn't just one free pint at the end of a tour. You got plenty of free, you know, samples, so. That's great. So, all right. <laughs> I was in drama school at the time, so it was very welcome. <laughs> Beautiful. Beautiful. What what yeah. is drama school like? Because a lot of people I've talked to have been. There's all different ways. Like yeah, how, explain for someone who has never been to drama school. What is a drama school like? Um, it's uh, I went to a college in Dublin. It was an Inchicore College in Dublin, and they had a performing arts course. Cool. 
cool. And the base, actually, I did one year course in Cork, which was like a basic, um, basic kind of techniques in terms of theatre. They teach you things like theatre history. Sure. So sure. You get to learn all about your Shakespeare. You get to learn about your Greeks, about the you know Sophocles, all these kind of writers. Sure. It's important to know all that. It's like like any trade. It's it, it's Agreed. important to know the history and the people who've influenced it. Um. Uh, for me, there was there was these kind of very definite classes. Like you take dance classes. Sure. Basic ballet classes. You take uh, voice production. Um, Smart. For me, in drama school, there was singing classes as well as um. As uh, in voice production, you would learn things like phonetics, like how to actually break down language in terms of sounds. Oh, that's cool. Because um, that kind of comes in handy when it comes to, you know, when you've got to kind of alter your accent and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, for sure. Uh, practical, practical kind of um, ways of kind of, of, of doing that. Uh, we would have lots of, th- that's basically what it was. Like it was kind of concentrated. I, mine was like five days a week. I did one year in Cork, which was a lot of fun. You got to work on particular plays. Cool. You got to work on different styles of plays. Like you got to learn the difference between, you know, the, the likes of um, the likes of Ibsen. Yes. And learn about the likes of Brecht and what the difference in that type of theatre was. So sure. You know, it kind of it makes you just a bit more well-rounded. You know, I know a lot of people they get involved in acting because. Not everyone, but a lot of people, they want to become actors because they see famous people on TV and it looks like a really cool lifestyle. Absolutely. I mean, for, the, for the most part, theater and acting, it's, it really is a trade and it is a profession. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's, uh, I it's mean, also work. It's a lot of work. <laughs> yeah. It exists for a reason. Yep. And I mean, it's great if you're, it's great if you're really good looking and you've got a hot body and you can just... What's that like? On a set and get cast. cast. <laughs> But that never happened to me. Yeah, same, same. Not, That's why we're funny. I'm not that type, exactly. So <laughs> I had to go and put in my time and put yeah. in my effort, you know. And and even when you come out of drama school, then you get involved with theater companies and you, you pay your dues, like any kind of profession, any kind of a trade. You, you, you work. And a lot of time you work for free. A lot of time you work for a minimum wage. Absolutely. And it's, it's, you know, I've often been told, like, this could be your big break or this next thing could be your big break. I've always looked at it as they're all steps on the ladder. Like, I totally you know, agree. It's all cumulative. Building your career. Yeah. yeah, it is. It really is, you know. Built so that. um, that's another bit of advice for any young actors out there. I'm, I'm working on it myself as well at the moment is to, you know, it, it takes a lot of work and yeah, it takes a lot of support as well. You, you need people that really support you and kind of people who can see that, you know, you this is something that you do and that it's it's not just a hobby, you know, then For the more sure. serious you are about it, the more serious you be treated. You I know? totally agree. That's why I, I think it was Re- Regina Hall, maybe, who just, right. won, who just won an award. And in her acceptance speech, that's what she said. She was like, this is because of all the support. This is what happens yeah. when you support somebody. Well, absolutely. Nobody does it by themselves. Yeah, absolutely. If it wasn't for like teachers, school teachers, family members, even my, I'm, I'm engaged to be married next year. And my yeah, fiance, congrats on that, yeah, by the way. Yeah. Thank you very much. I mean, if it wasn't for having someone like her, she's a business person herself in her own right. She's built her own business. Amazing. Her own. It's an education company, and she helps absolutely loads of families here in New York and That's sets cool. up all sorts of all sorts of curriculums for schools around New York City and stuff like that. She's um, she understands what it is to kind of build something from nothing, and uh, having someone like that in my life really, really helps as well. You know? Yeah, totally. Totally. There's not, there's not too many people out there would. Uh, I don't think there's many people out there would, you know, be into their partners giving up a bar. Oh, tell me about to it. To pursue their dreams, you know. And <laughs> oh yeah. Completely 100 percent behind it, you know. Oh yeah, I'm married to a nurse, and they are very oh, wow. realistic and practical. So I was yeah. like, I'm gonna do this acting thing for a while, and <laughs> she's like, I don't need to understand it. I support you, whatever it is. <laughs> All right, cool. Well, and that, that's 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 all you need. need. Yeah. That's what you need, you know. And even I even people even with this theater company I'm setting up. You know, I've had people ask me, like, you know, we want to invest, we want to donate money. I'm like, no, don't. I don't need that. What I need is people to, you know, share their time, share their effort. Even yeah. if it's a kid, buy a ticket, come and see us, tweet about it, you know, write up, you know, what you thought about our production on Facebook when we finally do get to perform in November. Absolutely. Um, that, that's that's it. It's, it's all about support. You totally know? agreed. It's really all about support. And word of mouth is the way to go, too. It's like you can you can spend money, but money it runs really out. Is. You know, but it's like if someone's like, I saw this show and it was great. I'm going to go see that because I heard, not because I saw something, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's 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 really support is support is the basis of everything. And 
and and it is. I mean, and even I mean, I've even had in the last six or seven months on on Twitter and and Instagram, I've managed because of the success of Red Dead Redemption Two, I've managed to meet a lot of people who are just absolutely amazingly supportive, amazingly, you know, they're reaching out, saying really nice things about my little bit of work. But the point to me is always, if it wasn't for you guys going out and spending your hard-earned money on the game and actually living it, being involved in it, and, and just, you know, sharing your experiences of it, then it'd be all for naught, you know? I'd just sure. be a crazy person yeah. in a really tight suit with funny, uncomfortable balls all over my body. That's right, that's you know? right. <laughs> I mean, that's a Saturday regardless. But... Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Living out my, my fetish fantasy. That's yeah. right. That's right. <laughs> Whatever gets you through the day. I don't judge. Don't I work. agree. Yeah, yeah no, no judgments. Exactly. Yeah. That's right. How do I get one of those suits? <laughs> like for personal use. <laughs> I know. I, I'm sure there's all sorts of. There's got to be. <laughs> got to be a couple, yeah. <laughs> so Red Dead 2, easily one of the greatest games of all time. And not just game, like one of the greatest stories of all time. It's a wonderful story. Yeah. I, I love that, like, when I, because I'm very much, my whole show is about, like, enjoying something that I like and then finding the people behind it and then getting to know those people. It's like, right. it's like I know your work, but I want to get to know you as a person, yeah. you know? And uh, I loved when I found out that, I mean, you play Sean McGuire. Amazing. Yeah. I love that Sean McGuire <laughs> is an Irish immigrant. So are yeah. you. <laughs> And you can like, I was like, dude, it's, it's all real. You yeah. know? It's like a cool. <laughs> Some of it's real. Some of it's real. I'm a little bit older than Sean. That's the only I thing. I mean, they can't but, see um, This is an audio medium, Mick. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's, and I, I, I didn't know much about video games before this. Sure. I really don't. I mean, I've got a PlayStation 4 and I've got, <laughs> um, I've three games. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I've got Red Dead 2, which obviously, you know, that's there. Really and I've got. FIFA is the game that I play all the time. FIFA, I think. There you go. I think it's FIFA 18. I haven't even bothered upgrading it. Yeah. <laughs> I used to love when I was a kid. I loved video games. I think for that reason that you said earlier, it, I think it video games kind of appeal to that kind of um, artistic side, you know, where you could actually kind of role play, where you could be these other characters, you for know. Sure. Um, yeah, I can remember like playing like games on my Commodore 64, and it's funny. A lot of the games back in the old days, in the 80s. Uh, for Commodore 64, they were like remakes of movies. Sure, sure, you know? sure. And it was kind of cool like to be able to play these games. I remember like the very first Batman came out, the Michael Keaton one, and I had that on the Commodore 64. I remember Platoon. There you go. You know? Yeah. yeah. Video <laughs> game. And it was really, yeah, it was really cool like to be able to play these games and almost be in the movie itself. And um, so I think that's kind of that. That's the appeal I really kind of get from video games now. Um. Yeah, Red Dead Redemption, the story, I mean, just the writing alone. Is just, it's, it's just unbelievable, you know? It, it's up there with everything else. Like, it's, it's yeah. with movies and just... It, and I think you're right. With, like, video games, because you're playing the character, you're connecting with them because you're seeing it through their eyes. Yeah. So when stuff happens, it affects you big time because you're not just watching it detached-wise. Yeah, you're, you're, in, you're in it. Yeah. Yeah, and man, did uh, that... Well, the interesting thing about it that, I mean, the one thing I will say about the experience of working on it was that it's, I've done a little bit of TV and stuff like that, but it was probably the closest thing to working in theater. It oh, was I very, bet. it was, um, it was performance it, capture. It was, it was performance capture, yeah, motion capture, performance capture. So I, I, again, like I said, I don't know much about working on video games, but from the questions I've gotten from a lot of people, I guess a lot of video games in the past must have been, you know, much more heavily kind of um, audio, yeah, for sure. And then the audio was on top of animation. This, for me, anyway, was 90% performance capture. So what you see and what you hear was pretty much at the same time. That's so and, cool. Um, and it was, it was really great because you did, after a while, you know, you got to know all these other people you were working with. And it became that that type of camaraderie that you have in a theater company. Yeah, I bet. It became that kind of feeling of, you know, you know, you, you got to know how people worked and you got to kind of really enjoy that. You got to see like the, the characters kind of come to life. Sure. You know, and do so scenes there, it was, together. As yeah, it was. Just yeah. Lines. Exactly. It, and it wasn't as detached even as a lot of, a lot of times when you work on TV shows and you, you know, you get your, you get to play a part for a day. You're going in, you've learned your lines, you yep. shoot it and that's it. It's, and it is very detached. Yes, very much so. Even though you're there and you're doing it, you're in and you're out. It's pretty quick. Whereas with this, you know, they, they, rock star like and the creative team and all the engineers those people that they really kind of they, they really gave us as actors and performers 
so much time and so much um it just gave us so much to kind of to be able to create to be able yeah. to create this you know and also find them i mean i it was so much about sean that kind of evolved over the course of like three years of working on it you, you know three years on it yeah well because i would go in and i might go in for like two or three days in one month and then i'd get called back a month or two later sure or two or three days here and there so you know you go in and you shoot a bit of work and you do a couple of scenes and then you wouldn't know when you'd be called again and then eventually when you would be you'd have all this time where like as an actor you're always thinking about what you just done you're you're it's kind of settling into your bones. It's settling into you. Sure. The cow is kind of distilling a little bit in there. So when you go back, you know, it was, it was, it was a real thrill because I got to kind of go back and think, okay, I'm going to try this the next time. I'm going to try and bring a little bit more of this to Sean. Yeah. You get more Everybody comfortable. You yeah, you get more it. comfortable. Yeah, absolutely. And mm-hmm. there's, there's, a real, there's a real honest kind of evolution and progression, you know, amongst all the characters that kind of occurred very kind of naturally and very, you know, in a very theatrical kind of way. Sure. And you that know, came across too. Yeah, it was it was the most method I think I've ever been yeah. in my life. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I'm sure. Yeah, it was. It was it was great. And also, I mean, like I said, you're you're wandering around this big giant soundstage in a, a tight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I'm not. I'm not <laughs> the most. I wouldn't be the. I wouldn't be the go-to guy on a beach for people to kind of take pictures of. Depends what kind of movie so, it is. <laughs> it depends. Yeah, it depends what you're into. Exactly. But, um, I support but, it. But you know, but yeah, but you you got comfortable just being, and you know, you just really got comfortable being with all these people. It was, it was sure. a real joy, a real pleasure. It was are, great the, are those suits one size fits all? How does this go? No, no, <laughs> <laughs> no, they're not. No, no, they're not. All, they've got different sizes for different shapes and body types and everything. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Yeah. Did you have those? I, I've seen like behind the scenes of like headgear and stuff like that. Yeah, you get like a. They, they make these masks themselves. Again, they're they're absolute geniuses. Yeah, it's next level tech. I mean, they're, but they're they're they really are on the cutting edge, and they're they're just they're just great about getting stuck in and just creating what they need. Sure. So yeah, you basically had these like head pieces of headgear with like a camera on your face, which would capture your facial expressions. Man, was it heavy? Like that. No, no, pretty light, pretty light. It That's was just cool. it could be a bit cumbersome when you were doing scenes that involved any type of moving or, or close quarter stuff. Sure, sure, sure. You if know, you had any hugs, like, you had to. Oh, sorry. Any no, hugs good, uh... and stuff like that. You had to kind of yeah. Sure. You have to just be aware. You, you get used to it. You know, you get used to it after all. It's like anything else. I bet. I bet. So yeah. what was that audition like? Because usually for big time projects like that, they don't tell you what you're doing. They're just like, yeah. come in and do this thing. I didn't. I didn't. I, I think, to be quite honest with you, it took me about a year before I yeah. figured out what I was doing. <laughs> <laughs> no, not like that long. Not that long. <laughs> and the audition was, it was just, I got a call from my agent telling me that they thought that I would be right for this particular project. I asked them what it was. They said they couldn't really tell me. Of course. That's always a good sign. Yeah, I went down to the audition. The audition was the strangest thing in the world. It was where I was playing like, um, I think I was, I think they wanted me to be some sort of like a, like an IRA type of kind of. No, of course. <laughs> That's Sean, like, right? Well, I, yeah, I was like, yeah, I was thinking, I was thinking it was kind of strange. And I got to sing God Save the Queen. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. You know, as it's a rite of passage, I, 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 person, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. and, uh, it was just very odd, very strange. And um, I really didn't know anything about it. And I, I even, and when they I eventually got the call and they said, Yeah, yeah, they liked you, they want you to come in on it. I had actually booked a, a trip away with a bunch of mates to play in a soccer tournament in Florida, believe oh, it or not. Yeah. In Miami. Look at that. I was supposed to go down and play in this soccer tournament for a week. I was like, Well, there's this tournament that I'm involved in, and Kind blah, of blah, blah. I go every year and you know, I you know, I mean, is is this just like for a day or what's the story? And then the guy, one of the people at Rockstar was like, Well, it's actually kind of a big deal, it's gonna be quite a bit of work for you if it were <laughs> so, I'm thinking, ah, sure, fuck, I sure I might as well do it. So I, yeah. I suppose I, you know, I, I just because like I said, like you know, like you said yourself, it's um it wasn't all explained to me what it was. You know, sure. if it had been explained to me, I would be like, Oh sure, absolutely I'll do it. But at the time, I didn't quite know what it was. So I was like, okay. And yeah, that, and that's kind of how it was. And a lot of the time, it was kind of blind. You'd, you'd get your script the day before, and you'd learn your script. And it could be four or five pages long. could be 10 or 15 pages long or whatever. And you just go in and shoot the next day. So again, that whole evolution, it was, it was a very natural evolution because it was like you were built. literally learning on your feet. I was learning who Sean was on his feet day by day, you know. And sure. 
it even took me a while to realize that he was a member of the gang. You know? Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, it took me a while. It took me, I remember having a conversation with uh, one of the other actors about it. And I was like, you know, where does he fit in in all this? And uh, again, I mean, the scope of the project is so massive that, you know, they, they want to make sure that they're keeping it as close as possible. And I think that's, I think it's, 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 I think it's a really positive thing that they do because I agree. They want to make sure that the, the product is just that, it, that it, it, we, that they do get the reaction that they get, you know, like that sure. it is such a story and a wonderful kind of gift, you know? Sure. Well, speaking of reactions, uh, yeah. when did they tell you what happened to Sean? <laughs> oh, I, uh, I about halfway through. Yeah. I, yeah. But halfway through, I had to do some audio work. And, oh no! <laughs> and that, that's when I found out, and I was I was a bit distraught about it. I was like, "You got to be kidding me!" I bet. You know? and, and I realized what kind of a video game it was. I realized people are going to die. Sure. But when I actually played the game, two funny things about my experience of the game. The first was I spent a lot of time working on singing. Oh, sweet! Makes sense. Doing things around the campfire after he gets rescued. Sure. And when I first played the game, I sent Sean off home to the camp with the rest of the gang. And I just decided to go fishing. I was oh, out there and I went hunting. And I took my sweet ass time getting back to the camp. Yeah. <laughs> to go back to the camp and not realizing that it was, you know, the nature of the game. I missed the party. I missed my off. Oh, no. <laughs> and I never said that I spent all this time learning these songs and doing all this work and having these funny scenes and the love scene with Karen and all this. And I missed it. <laughs> and I get back and everyone's all over. <laughs> And then the second one that stood out was I can remember going into the scene in Rhodes just before Sean got died. Yeah. And I kind of started the scene. And as I'm walking down the street, I'm thinking, oh, no, this is it. This is it. Oh, shit. <laughs> I kind of wanted to go back. And I was like, well, I'm here now. Might as well see what happens. Yeah, and, here we go. Oh, no. And yeah, I think I put the game down after that happened. I didn't pick it up for about three or four months. That's fair. Yeah, you know, out, like, out of respect. <laughs> yeah, I just put it down for a while. And I was like, ah. God, don't yeah. think I can go back to that. But this is what I've got back games, and I do. I, I do. It's it's just wonderful. It's it's great. It is, and it's so yeah. it's that particular scene is one of those like you do not see it coming. There's not a build up <laughs> mid sentence. <laughs> they really do again and again. It's the writing and it's the creative people behind it. I mean, they send you on this fantastic mission where you're burning down tobacco fields. Yeah, and you and it's like you've really kind of. I, I know. I understand. There's a lot of people out there who found Sean to be a little bit of an annoying type of character, and I can see why people would have felt that. But then you kind of do get brought into him and you do get to know him a little bit and he becomes a little bit like your little brother. Yeah, he's and great. Wanna, and, you know, and they did, they did a great job of kind of building that little kind of, that little bit of a story between him and Arthur and those little kind of uh, personalities and those relationships. And yeah, and then they just pull the carpet out from under your feet and yeah. <laughs> half his bloody brain is splattered all over the dusty road. Because why not? <laughs> yeah. You know? They got to make sure you're still awake. That's, exactly yeah that's it that's the you beauty know? of the character is like it's one of those where you get to know him and then they make you care about him and yeah. then you get to do all these cool things with him so that when it does happen you it hurts it hurts yeah, yeah. and that, that is that's i mean that's great theater that's great movie making that's great totally video totally agreed that's you know when it when it pulls at the heartstrings like that you know for sure yeah. and that's just a warm-up for arthur i mean i know yeah <laughs> Everyone else, I was <laughs> when I when I eventually got back to the game and I saw all these other things happen. I was shocked. I was like, "Oh my god!" I, when poor Kieran Duffy came into camp, I was like, "Oh no!" Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "Oh, Eagle, Jesus, that's yeah. terrible." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jeez, man, that's so crazy. I, dude, when this game came out, listen, I'm a, I'm not really a gamer as well because I'm running the rat race, you know. Yeah. It's like I don't really have a lot of time. The time I'm using, yeah. I dedicate to my show. I'm the same with I, I'm I'm working on my theater as well, so I don't have as much time. And yeah. when I switch on the PlayStation, it's usually FIFA just yeah, to yeah, yeah. just to detach a little bit, just a touch of it. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, this was one of those things that like I so because I I hadn't played a video game in a long time. Then when Red Dead came, I was like, I love the first one, got to get the second one. Yeah, and it's one of those that like really sticks with you after a while. Just the the level of storytelling and. When it came out and I beat it, I was like, okay, now I'm going to watch all the behind-the-scenes stuff I can. I yeah. want to know who these people are. And one of my favorite things about the game was the camaraderie you talked about. When you right, see these yeah. other actors, like you've got you know, Roger Clark and Ben Davis and uh, Peter Blomquist and all these people, you guys are the crew. You know, It's yeah, so we, cool. We, I, again, I think uh, the nature of the game and the nature of uh, just how, again, like just how Rockstar kind of operates, 
they really did. They put a fantastic group. I mean, there was over, so I think there was something like over 1,500 actors all together. Yeah. I've got friends in theater who worked on it, playing these other characters that you wouldn't even, that you know, jump in and out and have done yeah. work. So they're a huge employer of actors. So, you know, kudos to Rockstar. But they really did. They really thought long and hard about putting these people together and, and yeah, there's, I mean, every single, every single one, of, everyone got on really well, you know, everyone, everyone, there's, there's not a, there's not a bad thing to say about anyone. Um, I got, I actually do, I, I, I worked with Roger in the course of this, myself and Roger actually did a play together. Oh, sweet. Uh, it was, yeah, and I hadn't done theater in about two or three years. And a mutual friend of ours, who's a director, by the name of Tim Ruddy here in New York, he called me up and he's like, are you still acting? I says, well, I've been doing this <laughs> that redemption thing, but you know, I kind of, running the bar business, kind of been taking a bit of time off. He says, well, I'm directing a play. It's for two or three nights only out in Queens. It's a it's this little Irish play. It's a bit of fun. Um, Roger's doing it. And I says, well, Roger's doing it. I says, you know what? Yeah, I'll do it. I know the play. Me, there you we, go. We it. And it's just basically two guys sitting in the bar having a couple of beers. The helping. best kind. The best and kind. And the guy comes in and he's looking for love in all the wrong places. It's like four <laughs> shows back. And at one point, myself and Roger got to even dress up in women's clothes because it's ladies' night. And there you go. <laughs> you to get free drinks. So, you know, there's, there's all those kind of experiences as well. You know, like we actually kind of we do get to work together and we do see each other. Um, I was coming home from uh, performing at the Irish Rep about a month and a half ago, and I'm sitting on the train, and there is uh, K- there's Kylie Vernhoff, oh, there's Mr. Grimshaw across she- from me. She's wonderful, yeah, lovely woman, and brilliant, brilliant actor. For real. And yeah, just sitting across me in the train, I'm like, oh, geez, good to see you, you know? it's Sure, sure. You just have that knowing little bow, like you both know. know. (laughs) And then it's, how are you doing? Good to see you again, you know? How's everything? But it's, uh, yeah, there was a really nice kind of sense of people kind of working together. And even since, even since it's all wrapped up, a few, uh, a few other members of the cast have come to see shows. The other thing that you were saying that's really cool about like Rockstar having employed so many actors, the play that I went and saw in New Jersey uh, had a, the guy who played Arthur Morgan's doctor who diagnosed him in the play. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, no, that's so cool. I was like, it's everywhere. It's everywhere. It's that's so cool. Absolutely amazing. That's really cool. Yeah, that's cool. Dude, loved it. Fantastic. Loved it. So having having done all this stuff for so long, like what what is it about theater that keeps bringing you to it? Uh, I think I'm just... I'm just I'm at my happiest when I'm working at that, you know? It's um, It's just there. It's in you. <laughs> Yeah, it's just yeah, it's it's a, uh, it's there's something. I just love theater. I love theater. I love being involved in theater. There's just it's a sense of community. It's a, uh, it's it, you know, yeah. I just I really do. I enjoy. It. I just love theater. It's, sure. It's, um, and I, I I love, I love you know when I love surprising people with it. You know, sure. I, I get I've gotten from a few people. They're kind of shocked and surprised sometimes, and they come home and they see you do something. They're like, "Wow, I didn't, you know, I didn't think you." You know, it's kind of like when you're sitting around a campfire with a bunch of friends and you're getting stoned, and someone pulls out a guitar. Sure. And it's, you know, <laughs> Hendrix, and you're Whoa. like, "Wow, I, I didn't realize you could do that." Sure. So I think that's there's a little bit of that as well in there. You know, it's it's kind of performative. Sure. Um, well, yeah, it's just I just I also think I also think that just that theater kind of gives. I think theater is one of those kind of. Uh, art forms that kind of really does it. it it gives back to the community in great ways you can learn from it yeah I you totally know agree. And, and I even, even the current thing i'm working on right now with my own the pigeon theater company which i've just kind of started so uh, cool. kind of the the, the our, i suppose our mission if you want to call it that is to kind of bring theater not just to people who go to theater a lot but also bring it to audiences that might not necessarily always go so our first show is a one-man play that i'm doing myself cool at Arlene's Grocery, which is this rock venue down the Lower East Side in Manhattan. Sweet. And, you know, just get get people who would probably get, rather go to a, a rock club on a Tuesday or a Wednesday night to see a band. You know, get those kind of people to come and see a bit of theater. Make it interesting for them, you know? Yeah, you never and know. And there, it's, is an element, an there is an element. There is an element. There is an element. I do understand there is an, uh, a bit of a stuffy element sometimes surrounding a lot of theater. For sure. And, um, and, that that's not true. I think that's more of a. I agree. I that's agree. A, that's what people kind of make of it or think of it. But yeah. Think, you know, it's, it's, theater can be accessible and it can kind of help and can influence and and that's that's what kind of what gets me about. It. That's what I love about it. You know. I totally agree. It, the 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 stuffiness is from people who don't actually go. It's like yeah. the, it's the excuse for not going. 
Yeah, you know exactly. I mean? Exactly. Well, I get. It. I mean, I'm a, like a, probably alluded to a few times. I'm a massive soccer fan. Yeah, of course. You know, for the people who you don't like soccer for a variety of reasons, which are all very valid. If you don't like soccer, that's fine. Sure. But I find myself a lot of time kind of saying, "Well, you know, it's not really like that. It's not all about what you think it's about. It's just there's other reasons where people go." And yeah, again, actually, as like theater, I find soccer is a great kind of equalizer. It brings people together. You know. I agree. I agree. Uh, all kinds of backgrounds and walks of life. Where in Florida are you right now? Are you I in- I'm in Naples. Naples. Is that close to Orlando or is it? So it is three and a half hours south of Orlando, but it's, okay. so if you go to Miami, it's directly on the other coast. Okay. Right, right, right. Very so good. it's like an hour and a half. Like a oh. lot of the, a lot of the acting gigs I get are in Miami. I just drive very to the good. other coast. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. Cause I've been down there quite a bit for, to see New York city football club play sure. against Orlando. Dude. Down, Orlando down there. So yeah, they've built a nice new stadium there. So yeah, dude, next yeah. time you're down, let me know. I will. Actually, I've, I've been down there on two or three occasions, and I was there for the very first Perfect. game between New York and Orlando when they first entered the league together, about four or five years ago now. And I was down there for the very first game that the stadium, when they opened up their new stadium, just outside, not far from the Citrus Bowl. Sure. So yeah, I have a good time when I'm in Florida. I love Florida. It's great crack. It's nice. It's nice. Yeah. It's uh, It's really hot now. Cool. Yeah. I was in Orlando I... this past weekend, and it was like 102 Jamie, yeah, that's what I said. I was like, let's get inside quick. <laughs> well, I grew up in Ireland where it rains all the time. So yes. believe me. <laughs> yeah. when I see the sun come out, I don't care. It's, that's yeah. why a lot of Irish people, you know, we get wrinkly very quick. Oh, because you, when I'm, we do see the sun, we just take off our clothes and jump in front of it and yeah. go red. You know, I've got, I've got the red beard. I've yeah, got the yeah. Irish genetics. And I'm like, you know what? There's no tanning. For yeah. anyone of Irish descent, it's like you go from pale to red back to pale. That's it. I don't care yeah, what that's... anyone says. They're like, just stay out in a little bit. I was like, no. Yeah. I'm get, I get sunburned well, from opening the fridge. I was like, yeah, we, is... we wear it as, as, a, as a badge of honor. It's like, yeah. I got to see sun. What did you do with your summer? I saw the sun. I'm red. <laughs> yeah. This is my fourth that's nose. Right. This is my fourth nose. I peeled off three noses already this summer. Right. It's a badge <laughs> of honor, man. You know. You purposefully try to get as sunburned as possible. You're like, well, yeah. yeah, well, Carl got sun poisoning. You're like, oh, yeah, well, we got a badass over you're, here. You're gonna go. You're gonna go eventually. So yeah, it might, it might as well be from having a bit of sun. You know. That's right. You know, half of the Irish blessing is made the sun shine in your face. You're like, all right, what about the exactly, rest of me? Yeah. <laughs> maybe, yeah, maybe so. What is it? May the sun always be at your back, or something like that. Yeah, yeah there right? you go. It's, whatever <laughs> it is, it's good. <laughs> I can remember. I remember going to Spain for the first time when I was a kid, when I was like eighteen or nineteen, and we'd get what we'd call the Irish tan, which is you'd be sitting, you'd be sitting at like you know one of these kind of cool outdoor bars, which we don't have in Ireland because it's always raining. Sure. And the only bit of sun that's hitting you is the back of your neck. Just uh, the bit that's peeking out from the top of your arse and the oh, back yes. of your legs. Yep, yep, yep. And everything else is pale. You just have like these three stripes: the back of your neck, the top of your arse, and the back of your legs. And that was. Oh like, yeah. yeah. Oh, I have really, I have really fun uh, V-neck yeah, right. sunburns now. <laughs> like now, I look like an idiot. This is just that's, great. <laughs> who cares? It's it's a badge of honor. That's right. I earned this. <laughs> I earned it for this one. Yeah. I don't want to go back out in it now. I learned my lesson, but you know. It's hard fun. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Well, dude, this is a this is a, can you believe we're talking for an hour already? Are you serious? I like talking. Dude, yeah, me too. It's it's a it's, it's this is great. I'm and I'm looking forward to hearing what Kaylee has to say in a few weeks ago as well. That's going to yes. be fun. Yes. Dude, so going to be great. Before we go, I have to ask. Where yes, sir. Where can people find you online? Uh, let's see. Online. I'm on Twitter. You are on Twitter. Uh, uh what am I on Twitter? Let me look at my phone here. One second. Of course. I set up all these different accounts and stuff. But on Twitter, on Instagram, I'm Mick Melamphy. Yep. Love it. That's that, I mean, that's how we know each other. That's how we met. That's right. On Twitter, I'm at, at Mick Melamphy as well. Boom. Get that SEO. Yeah. And I'm also on on Twitter as the Pigeon Theater Company, which is at Pigeon Company. Love it. Love it. And they're basically the best place to catch me. You know, that's where I'm usually posting something stupid at two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> yeah. um, Those are my I've hours. Good. I've gotten really good about being on Twitter and not expressing opinions because oh, dude. Just a, Same. Twitter is just a rabbit hole. <laughs> you go down that rabbit hole and someone's going to bite. <laughs> oh, yes. And I've, and I've done it. I've posted stuff and, and I, I'm like, you know what? I don't need, I, I don't need this aggravation. I don't need to be. Yeah. defend my opinions so I, I try not to anymore so most of most of what i'm using social media for now is promoting my bits and pieces of theater and you know 
and also interacting with him. You know, a lot any any fans of of the game. I try to I try to interact with people. You know, if, if somebody reaches out to me, the nice thing about Sean is that you know he's he's in it pretty. He's in it for a, a couple of nice scenes, and that's it. You know, so I, <laughs> I I know I know there's other people involved in the game who, you know. Are, are huge and, and that's great but I mean anytime anybody reaches out to me I try to respond and I'm very appreciative of people sending nice wishes and like I said it's, it's all about it's all about the people who play it and the people who support it you know totally what's a play without an audience absolutely yeah I feel you but dude this was awesome you got you got stuff coming out look out for the Pigeon Theater that's the thing people can see you live in New York at Pigeon Company and uh, also the Smuggler at the United Solo Fest on October yes. 5th yes there's actually a few really wonderful people from Canada, the UK, and here in the USA who are big fans of the game who are actually making the effort, and New Jersey as well, who Love are making the effort to come and check that out. So that's going to be fun. That's the Smuggler at the United Solo Fest Theater here in New York City on October 6th. And if anybody is in New York from the 3rd to the 20th of November, you can see me in Colonel Creedon's The Cure. Love it. Uh, there are no cowboys in it, unfortunately. Oh, but well, never mind. Deal breaker. Irish, uh, yeah, there is an Irish guy. <laughs> <laughs> There's an Irish guy waiting for pubs to open in it, and um, that's going to be at Arlene's Grocery. And uh, yeah, just if you look up at Pigeon Company on Twitter or look up the Pigeon Theatre Company on Facebook, that's where you'll find us. Love it, love it. All right, listen, it was a pleasure chatting to you, bro. Dude, absolutely. Um, if you're ever heading back to Dingle. Yeah, yeah. Shoot, me a, shoot me a message, and if I'm there, we can go hang out at uh, Dick Max Pub at the top of the hill there together for a few pints. One hundred percent. All right, yeah. and thank you to your wife as well for doing the wonderful job she does. We need yeah. more educators <laughs> and more nurses in this world. I totally agree. I'm always saying that. I I I parade her around. I'm like, look, look what I did. Yeah, look, look what I have. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I feel like that. But what Jessica, my fiance, does is just it's just such a it's um, so important. Yeah, it's one that you know we need to take care of, you know, our, our kids, and we need to take care of people who are sick. You know, that's right. And we get to just be actors. So hey, <laughs> yeah. we get to play them on TV or in video games or on that's on stage. Right. That's right. <laughs> and. Uh... Hello, friends. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of The Interesting Podcast. If you'd like to follow the show, it is at Pod of Interest on Twitter. If you'd like to follow me, I'm at Jedi Brian on all social media sites. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it and tell your friends. Let them know we've got some cool stuff going on over here. Speaking of cool stuff, we now have merch. Just search The Interesting Podcast on tpublic.com to get some sweet gear. Also, I've made a Patreon. So if you'd like to support the show and get access to other exclusive shows... You can now do that at patreon.com slash Brian. On that note, special thanks to Chris, Ben, Jim, Daz, Kelly, Daryl, Logan, Victor, and JC. Your support means so, so much, and I cannot tell you how much I appreciate it. So until next time, be well.